All righty, Tom. So we haven't gotten a chance to talk to you since the SEC has reannounced the practice schedule, which will not occur originally planned this Friday when it looked like we were getting fall camp. It's not going to be next week. It's going to be the following Monday, so basically a week and a half from now. Kind of your thoughts on the SEC shifting up the practice time? Well, I guess it was understandable because the kickoffs for the openers moved up by three weeks. So, you know, it's not like you can entirely make up your spring. I mean, that boat has sailed. But it does give Sam Pittman and his staff um, – Sometimes not as compressed as it would have been. So, you know, I, it's, I understand it. It's hard to maintain the intensity of, of what would be, quote-unquote, a camp for that long. So they're, they're going to back off um, for a week and a half or so and then, and then start camp back up, and it won't be the old standard two-a-days where, you know, every waking moment you're, you're devoted to studying your playbook and watching film and going out and practicing and doing walkthroughs. So... It's just going to be a different year, and everybody already knows that, but it's going to be uh, the weirdest year we've had in college football in probably since World War II. Tom, I know Hunter Yurchek, we asked him, I think it was Nate Allen that asked him if any player had opted out, any, not just football player but student athlete, and he told us last Thursday uh, none, none that he knew of. Is that something you anticipate with Arkansas football, that you might see a player to opt out of this upcoming season? Yeah, I mean, clearly it could happen, and it could happen in any sport, and um, certainly it could happen in football. Um, Arkansas is in a little bit different place, uh, a program with a brand-new coach trying to trying to show that, hey, we can compete in the SEC, and I think that mindset kind of po- probably permeates the roster, and so there's guys that have things that they want to prove, and, and I'm not saying that, that discounts how they feel personally about their, their health. Mm-hmm. Because, you know that that could that could be in, in any person that plays college football. You know what what is it going to be like lining up across from somebody, and uh, you know sweating and, and sneezing and everything that happens in the midst of a football game. But I do think that these Razorbacks, uh, and I haven't seen anybody wanting saying they want to opt out. So I do think that they're uh, focused on trying to reestablish themselves in the SEC. Once um, Sam Tom is Clay Henry. Sorry, go ahead, Clay. Hey, go ahead, hey, Clay. Hey, Tom. I, you know, in talking to some of the guys, uh, you know, over the last couple of months, you know, there there are some guys that that have health issues. Like like Trey Knox told me he has asthma, and so you know, and, and that you know the COVID is you know a real issue with him. Uh, I, you know, he didn't say he was going to opt out, and I don't expect him to, but because he's like the ultimate competitor. But it's, you know, I think we should expect that there's going to be, you know, some fallout, you know, over the next couple of months, especially if, you know, if the numbers continue to rise in our state like they have in the last three weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, if, just, if, you've got a, if, if you've got a roster of 125 guys, there's going to be a, an asthma or, or, various other health issues that could impact um their their breathing or lung capacity or anything like that and it's funny you mentioned trey he's uh one of the few guys i've just bumped into out randomly at a local restaurant um the other day it looked like he was getting some, a mighty good portion of food and looked pretty healthy right then <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure he is yep yep the so I, i've got i want to change gears a little bit our summer is spent texting each other's pictures of our garden. Tell us, tell us how your vegetable garden. And Tom is the, yeah. is the ultimate green thumb man. I'm just saying that the vegetable garden is a big part of his life. Yeah, you know, I try to, and I gave the boys an update uh, on Tuesday. Clay, you haven't heard this, but the deer got in there and completely wiped out my okra. I mean, I had gotten. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I had gotten to where I was harvesting, you know, 15, 18 pods a day. I probably had about 16 or 18 nice plants up. They had destroyed several of them, but they got in the other day and just took them out, the tender parts where the okra's coming up, the buds, and just ripped them all up. I have harvested zero Bradley County tomatoes because of the deer. I've got to come up with a new game plan for next year. It's very sad. We, we might have to bring in some hunters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, Clay, oh, I think man. guns. 
I think guns can go off where you live, but I don't know if they could go off where I live, man. Yeah, mm. you're inside the city limits, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you can hunt them with a with a bow. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I get some of my I get some of my boys from Baxter County, and we'll roll. How's that? We'll come in with we'll come in with jeeps and rusted out suburbans, and we'll take them out, Tom. I love the sound of it. And for the listeners out there, Clay, you get, you've had an outstanding watermelon and tomato patch, and with high walls. But the, the deer got in it. Was it two two seasons ago or last season? The deer yeah, got in. Was last, you guys got more yeah, clever. Yeah, we we. We've got eight foot black walls, you know, mesh walls, and they, uh, they, it's been it's been pretty good, but it's still, we we had we've had some uh, we've had some smaller animals go under the walls, so you know it's it's never perfect, you know it's always, you live in the country, you you're fighting off, uh, you know we've had bears, we've had uh, bobcats, we've had other other critters. I I throw it back to you, Todd, and you can ask some legitimate football questions. I I don't know, man. This <laughs> this going out to to Tom's garden and trying to and get a deer or two is pretty entertaining to me. I don't know if I could do it, but uh, now it's been a while since I fought. Talking with uh, Tom Murphy here of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Tom, we're going to get a chance to talk with Sam Pittman at twelve thirty today. Uh, we're going to talk about the SEC scheduling. I might ask him about if any players on the team have opted out yet. What is kind of the biggest question or questions that you think are important that need to be answered from Coach Pittman today? Well, if they've seen enough in these walkthroughs and, and the, the agility drills and the conditioning that they've been doing, I mean, they're starting to get a better picture of uh, the, the, the guys' uh, fitness levels, how they turn their hips and run, all those types of things, what their bodies look like. Uh, has has anybody gone from you know cornerback to receiver? Has anybody moved from corner to safety? Um, those types of things and how the walkthroughs have gone because there's it's been an extraordinary off season in this in this part that they have been able to study uh, videos of what a Kendall Bryles offense will look like and what a Barry Odom defense will look like and you know if you see this formation and this check and this adjustment here's what you do. They've, they've gone through that on tape and, you know, uh, watching it on video and, and, and doing the study so many times. Now, can you go out on the field and make that happen? So um, yeah, the pace of the walkthroughs, you know, how everybody's holding up, and then what's the game plan to get ready? Uh, it's, it's not going to be two a day. You know, how are you going to structure what your practices are going to look like? So um, I think we're all in this mode of, are we going to be able to play football? Okay, yeah, it looks like we're going to be able to play football. How are we going to play football? And every time I've talked to Sam Pittman through the course of these four months, it's like they're having they're they're adjusting plans. They're getting videos ready for their guys to show. You know, they they did a ton of video work in March to be able to show their guys the stuff and, and adapting. And so a first year coach is like like him has never had it quite this way. And all the adjustments and changes you have to adapt to getting ready for a Steve. On the subject of position changes, Clay brought up something interesting earlier, Tom, that Blaine Toll is moving back from tight end to defensive end. That tight end room's awfully skimpy, man. Are they going to be able to withstand an SEC-only football season with, what, three tight ends? Two? Yeah, I think they will. Well, I mean, I guess when you add, yeah, yeah, because you you add the walk-ons in there. And here's the thing, they're not going to be used double tights like they did in the Bielema regime. And, I mean, when, when O'Grady, O'Grady was probably their, their best offensive, you know, pass-catching threat uh, last year before he left the team um, or was asked to leave the team. So uh, I don't think the tight end, they're, we're going to see near as many two tight sets. Do you, Clay? No, I think that in there, there's going to be, I think, I, I think, Kendall told me that they there's five percent of the time where there's no tight ends at all, and very seldom will there be two tights. Um, I think you'll see, you know, two backs more than two tights to be honest, in what he likes to do. But th- they will use tight ends. But I think you know Blaine told just I don't think he caught the ball well this summer, and I, I think that that you know they just see that his future is better at defensive end than than it is tight end. Not going to catch it. The quarterbacks are like, hey, we're, you know, we we need to have 
if that guy's going to be on the field, he needs to be a legitimate threat to catch the ball or people figure it out. Yeah, and and quite honestly, the, the more six five guys that are what what does he weigh two eighty, you know uh, that they can have a defensive end, uh, the better off they'll be because that's a pretty prototypical size, and they just got to get better uh, depth and and more legit pass rushers out there on the ends to have a chance in this league. Yeah, I mean, I envision Blaine told that somehow he could morph into J.J. Watt. I don't see him morphing into Hunter Henry, and I think that's what they saw is, is the same thing. And I'm not saying he is J.J. Watt, but it, 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 the ability to make a difference is there for him on defense more than it is on, on offense. And uh, But, yeah, I think they've got uh, – a walk on from Bentonville West, uh, you know Nathan Bax transferred, I believe, from was it Illinois State. Uh, so they got a few, and then Colin Sutherland, uh, true freshman, is here. So I think they've got enough tight ends to. Uh, in fact, I think John Cooper detailed at five in the story that we put online yesterday, the interview I had with the tight ends coach. So I, I don't think it's a, a room that that's uh, without bodies. Uh, I think they're still probably trying to upgrade that in recruiting, but uh, yeah. So it it's it's not as the tight end room is not as decimated as the okra patch. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. And you know, and that DN spot is one that uh, when you think about how many passes got batted down against the Razorbacks last year. I mean, there were I, at least a dozen passes batted down in the in the backfield. Did Arkansas bat down any? I mean, maybe a couple. I think a linebacker, maybe Bumper Pool got a Bumper hand got on one right. early on. I think you're right. Yeah. And, and so they got to have taller guys at end. They have to get, have guys with, with better rush moves. And, I mean, for heaven's sake, Mateo Soli was playing with a broken hand, and he was a starter. That's how, that's how uh, absent of depth they were with Dorian Gerald's injury at defensive end. That, that is a premium position that has to be uh, upgraded in multiple classes in a row. Yeah, speaking of, of Dorian Gerald, that's another question that could be asked today is how is that guy figuring in the mix, somebody that wasn't able to play because of, uh, I guess it was a bruised artery is the diagnosis, but, it, you know, mm-hmm. a, a leaking arter- artery <laughs> is what I heard. You know, it's like it, uh, it's a scary, I mean, it's as scary a situation as I've heard in football in a long time when, you know that that he wasn't able to play last year because of you know an issue with his carotid artery. You know it just is that guy back in the mix and can he, you know can he be? I did a you know speculative depth chart this summer with Dorian Gerald at, at starting defensive end and that would be huge if he can play snaps this year. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean he he came in highly regarded and if if he had been able to contribute uh, throughout the season, obviously it would have change their depth and now guys like Zach Williams and Soli uh have another have another you know like mentor at the position and I, that happened late in this late in the second quarter of the opener and a couple of people in the press box saw it like hey they just they just uh medical attention on D- Dorian Jell and I think they rushed him into the locker room and we we didn't know what was going on but um very very scary and uh You'd like to think that, I mean, they've, he's been given a, a medical clearance and obviously a, a huge supporter of Sam Pittman based on his social media activity because uh, these days have been crazy with uh, things that the players are putting out on social media. And it, it's nice to, to know that Sam Pittman obviously has the trust and backing of, of his players. Tom, I want to top up the interview with this, man. We've talked a lot of football to this point. Your Braves, just kind of early thoughts on the season's beginning. Well, I think our lack of starting pitching depth after Mike Soroka's Achilles injury is going to be something that's felt. You know, I guess in a way it's we're fortunate it's only going to be a 60-game season. And, you know, the Nationals got slowed up and don't, they're not off to a fast start. And the, the, the Marlins are the weird one, you know, the, Good start, and then the COVID lull. But I think they swept two from the Orioles yesterday. So, lo and behold, the Marlins could be tough. But uh, we've got a bunch of guys, a bunch of key guys that are hitting less than 200. And I'm talking about Freeman and Albies, who's a, a little dinged up right now. 
several other guys. So um, if we don't start hitting it, it's, and who knows? I mean, there's going to be so many teams in the playoffs. If you get healthy right when the playoffs start, you could go from being the last team in to, to the World Series champion. Uh, although, admittedly, I think the Dodgers um, are going to be hard to, to knock off in the National League. And, and the Yankees look like they're going to be super strong on the other side. Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Tom, hopefully those deer and other animals stay away from your garden, man. We'll talk on Tuesday. Yeah. Sounds good, yeah. Take care, y'all. All right, buddy. See ya.